Good morning. This is uh, Wednesday the 25th. I'd like to begin by wishing uh, Corbin Batchelder a happy birthday. We miss you, buddy. Hope to see your brother and your mother here some Sunday with Grammy and Grampy. And also, Carter Villadu, a happy birthday, Carter. So, so blessed to have you as part of our regular Sunday school attendance. And hope you have a great day and you can go to the treasure box Sunday when you come to church. Today's devotion is the go of relationship. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. That's Matthew 5. The demands, of our, the demands our Lord makes in the Sermon on the Mount are impossible for us to meet unless he has done a supernatural work inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only does Jesus Christ demand that his disciples go the second mile, he also demands that there be no trace of resentment inside them when they come up against tyranny and injustice because of their commitment to him. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. That's Matthew 5. There's no enthusiasm and no natural human quality that can withstand the strain that Jesus places upon his workers, honest workers, you and I. The only thing strong enough is a personal relationship with him. This relationship must be put to the test until the disciple has just one purpose remaining in their lives. I'm here for God to send me wherever he will. Everything else in the disciple's life may get muddied, but this relationship to Jesus Christ must remain perfectly clear. If I'm going to be a disciple of Jesus, I must be made one supernaturally. As long as I am dead set on being a disciple, I can be sure that I am not one, because we're trying to do it out of the self power, not the Holy Spirit power. Discipleship isn't a matter of my determination, but of God's. He said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you, and that's really the birth aspect of being born again. It's like our parents. We didn't choose our parents. We were birthed into that family by our parents. Same principle with God, and we're born again. This is the way the call to discipleship begins when we're born again. I can ignore God's call, but I can neither generate it nor decide how to answer it. When our Lord makes disciples, he doesn't ask them to do things they're naturally cut out for, necessarily. He asks them to do things they've been supernaturally cut out for by his grace and his power. The Sermon on the Mount isn't some unattainable ideal. It's a statement of what will actually happen in me or in you when, the, when Jesus Christ has changed my disposition and put into me a disposition like his own. We look just like Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one who can fulfill the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, he has to be in us. We have to be like Jesus. The challenge I have for us today is, are we this free in our living for our Lord, wherein we will go and do whatever he asks us to go and do, with whomever and whenever? Let's pray. Father, we do indeed want to be your disciple today, but not through our strength not through our intelligence, not through our finance, not through our abilities, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oswald said it happens when you're born again. This is like when we were born into our, our families. We didn't choose that. We were born into them. Same here. When we're born again, we're in your family now, and you will lead us. So, Father, we pray that today. Lead us and guide us into being the disciple you know we can be. You know. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.